The North Sea. Nothing locks the wind here. Some say the prevailing wind blows to the northeast. GE says it blows into the future. 80 kilometers off the German coast, the Dolwyn Gamma Converter Station will take in AC from its wind farms and send it on to the mainland as DC. Over 160 kilometers of high voltage DC cable, half under sea, half under land. At the onshore converter station at Durpen West, it's transformed into AC again for the grid. With a peak output of 900 megawatts, the Dolwyn 3 system will soon play a major role in Germany's transition to renewable energy. This short documentary looks back upon three years of this pioneering and monumental project. AC to DC conversion far offshore and high voltage DC cable for low loss transmission are key features of the Dolwyn 3 system. Offshore, cable is laid three meters deep into the North Sea from gigantic continuous coils. But on land, there are barriers. Cable spools over 800 meters cannot pass under bridges. The cables must be joined. Shallow drilling prepares the piping channels for the system's two power cables and two fiber optic operation lines. The challenges are many. Under creeks and rivulets, under streets and stretches of autobahn, and deeper under high-speed railway lines. Great care is taken to protect the land paths during construction. After the cables are laid, the soil is carefully replaced, layer by layer. Besides Dörpen, four other land locations in Germany played important roles in creating the Dolwyn 3 system. Mönchengladbach, Stralsund, Wismar and Warnemünde. Construction of the offshore converter station, or topside as it's called, began with laying the dock here in Warnemünde. The entire topside is built up module by module atop the barge Nordic Giant 102. The modules for the top side were built in Wismar. At the same time, the foundation was under construction in a separate hall at Wismar and at Stralsund. This foundation consists of two parts, two so-called jackets. Building the jackets was nothing short of a superlative accomplishment in welding. Welding was carried out from inside and out, and by two welders working from opposite sides in synchrony to rule out any possibility of material distortion. Nine trumpet-shaped ports are ready for the AC cables coming in from the wind farm clusters. These four are for the high voltage cables leading out to land. Each jacket is 55 meters long and 24 meters wide. 27 meters will disappear below the water. 9 meters above the surface will await the topside's arrival. Back in Warnemünde, the topside is on the way to its final colossal proportions. It is 47 meters high as high as the Arc de Triomphe. At 102 meters in length by 54 meters across, its footprint is that of a soccer field. Each converter station, on land and at sea, is equipped with two massive 685 megavolt amper transformers. They were made here in Mönchengladbach, a mere half hour from the Rhine, 
but not when you're transporting units weighing nearly 500 tons apiece atop a special trailer with 20 individually controllable axles and 160 tires. Top speed, walking pace. Day and night for four days. Transporting the transformers was a Herculean task. Bridges needed special reinforcement. The load had to be checked constantly for proper hydraulic weight distribution. High voltage railway power lines had to be lifted. And now and then, a few minor modifications were necessary, rarely carried out by German drivers in a rush. In Warnemünde, the two offshore transformers, each now filled with 100 tons of oil and tested in spill basins, are lifted into the top side. Soon, the dry dock is flooded to support the Dolwyn Gamma's growing weight atop the barge. This is the southernmost end of the cable lines. What comes out far off at sea goes in here in Durban West. After conversion, the end product, alternating current, is ready for the grid. The onshore converter station has three halls, positive on one side, negative on the other side, and a valve reactor hall in the middle. The construction mirrors that of the offshore station, except for the layout and the way the connections are made. Insulated AC connections from the plus and minus halls pass through the walls to the giant coils in cylindrical casings perched high atop insulators. From the valve reactor hall, the AC flows outside the building to the onshore station's two transformers and distribution system. Once these switches are thrown by European transmission system operator Tenet, Germany's energy transition will get a one million household strong kick forward. The two jackets are ready for sail out. These towering structures will be anchored to the North Sea floor by nine piles each with the precision of a fine watchmaker at 53 degrees 59 minutes and 45.33 seconds north and 6 degrees 25 minutes 14.35 seconds east and at tolerances that will allow the 18,000 ton topside to be slipped atop in float over. The offshore station is equipped with gas-insulated high-voltage switch gear for the varying AC inputs from the wind farms. The reactors arrive for the offshore station. Next, rack after rack of inverters are installed in the converter halls. The essentials of the system are now all aboard and intensive testing begins in dry runs. Now it's time for the flying tugboat. The tug that had to be hoisted behind the topside on the barge pushes. The tug at the front pulls. Once out of the dock, the barge is turned, and off it went. Up and around Denmark, and back down the other side, for the rendezvous at sea with the jackets. <laughs>